And I'd like for us to um, turn to Ephesians chapter 1 as we continue. <clears throat> Ephesians is a great one for really starting to notice how the Father did so much initiating and the Son only carried it out. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yeah. That the Father did so much initiating and the Son carried it out. It's just, it's really, really good. And from it, it will many times declare unto us that these things were the good pleasure of the Father, that they were what he wanted. And Jesus and the Holy Spirit have uh, moved not, not because the Father gave a directive, I'm the Father, so I oversee all this, therefore do what I say, but rather they without, I believe, without him saying anything, looked into his heart. Um, and in being able to do that, Jesus came and laid down his life. So let's look in Ephesians chapter 1, and um, <clears throat> let's, let's look at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and let me point out in the Greek there, the word and can also be translated even. See, Mallory's giving me the thumbs up, although I know that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Say it with us. <laughs> Blessed be the God, even Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So isn't that an interesting way of putting it, that it's, it's blessing the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ? Um, who hath, that's the Father, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places where? In Christ, but not Jesus blessed us. The Father blessed us, and he blessed us in his Son. Okay? And um, according as he, again the Father, according as he hath chosen us in Son, in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of sons, and that word their children is actually the Greek word sons, by Jesus Christ, by who? To who? To himself. This is more than words. This is expressing what great desire the Father wanted to have sons in the image of Christ and therefore placing us in Christ can assure that. Placing, shall we say it like this? placing branches in a vine, in this particular vine, so that it would bring forth what that vine has within it. Praise God, okay? Um, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, okay? And then verse five, having predestinated us unto the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Now this is, this is, I think, hard to translate because uh, it could easily be read according to just what he wanted. But I think adding number one, pleasure, um, it, it signifies something deeper than just a carnal demand for something, I want this. It is something dear, um, something that touches him beyond um, uh, regular things, regular things. <clears throat> um, and then it calls it, but it calls it good pleasure, and, but it says of his will. Yes, Jim? This kind of intention, okay? Um, say that's probably wrong. Not really. I don't know. I'm, I'm just joking. I am not a scholar. I got nothing here. All right? uh, 
but I, I, I see the phrase kind intention in his, um, uh, in his manner toward us through Christ. I see that. That is, that is clear as a bell. Uh, the thing that I fear that we don't see, I, I see, I think that we can grasp kind intention toward us. I think we can get that because it's about us. But I, I think that this good pleasure of his will is trying to reveal, is trying to roll back something for us so that we can look more into something that he really desired and that it would really please him beyond pleasing him pleasure. You know, I don't know, it's hard to put into words what I, I've always felt there when the Holy Spirit started showing me this. And then again, will, of his will. <clears throat> and uh, it's so easy for us Christians to, um, to go, okay, well, there's a will of God, and the will of God is this. You know, I mean, that's where we tend to go. There's the will of God, and the will of God is this, and we need to do the will of God. Okay, but I, again, see, I, I see that personally, and I could be totally wrong. I see that as missing, you know, not missing the mark, missing the heart. That is, you know, one is I am in authority and I have the authority to say this is my will. Does that make sense? But I don't think that's what it's saying. I think it's saying that it's showing what he would want. His will what he would want. And you, you get that with Jesus, not my will, but thine be done. But I don't think Jesus is going, well, you know, and you've heard me talk on this already during this, you know, particular course. But I don't think Jesus is going, not my will, but I'm going to do your will. You know, I don't want to do what I want. I'm going to do what you want, which is I'm trying to act like a Christian because that's the way we usually do it. You know, I'm going to do the will of God. See, and that's very Christian of us. Thank you. But it is, but Jesus isn't saying, again, in Jesus' case, not my will. Well, his will is the exact same as the Father. Isn't it? They're one. So how can God have, you know, God... The, the father have something this way and the son if they're one and the son going off in this direction no it's the same will but the son is very tender with the father even as the father is tender with the son and he says look it's as i've said before if this is the same exact will i don't want to go with what i want even if it's that and i tell you what i'll just say this this is a very eye-opener for most Christians if they would learn this, that even if you, you, you know, we say, well, what is the will of God in this situation? Should I go to, you know, uh, whatever. Should I go to the conference up in Washington or whatever, the gathering up in Washington or not? Um, and, um, and, you know, I have an ulterior motive for going, but God also wants me to go. And I, I can say not my will because my will is different than his, right? <clears throat> but it gets a little more sticky when my soul wants the same thing as his heart wants, but for different reasons, you see? And that's where you have to say not my will, but thine be done. All right, and built into that, <clears throat> Is, is a relationship with the Father by the Son. Can you see that? It's, it's not just a choice. I'm, I'm trying to divide out religion from, it's not always easy to do. It, it's not just a choice, well, not my will, but thine be done. Yes, it's a choice. Yes, it's an act of your will. But it's not just that. It is um, a desire to be with him where he's at, not just based on me or something. Yeah. You know, uh, a while, a while back, I used to really trust the 
I didn't know I did. It was not Christ. I trusted. I loved Jesus. So I was going to be okay because I loved the right person and I was going to be fine. Right. Then it occurred to me once, oh my goodness, I am generating a love for the Lord. And it looks holy, but I'm actually following him in a separate manner. But I can justify it because it's love for God. But it's not one. And it's not that total obedience of the Son and the Father to care for the Father's things. It was just a revelation thing. I just... Yeah. Well, and see, those are relational things, though. That's not just a, I'm going to make a will decision for God. You know, sort of a random Christian thing. The other is, I want your will, even if my will wants that, either for wrong motives or right motives, I want your will. And, it, and um, <clears throat> this becomes the... Becomes the you know, father son relationship, I and you and you and me, which is a very real relationship with God. Huge relationship. It's a huge part of it. And it is, it is incredibly important that that become more than a theology of the in Christ teaching, you know. Uh, that we, I, well, I've I've heard that teaching before. Well, have you seen the relationship of it that's with the Father and with His Son? And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son. It's not just Christian relationship to God up there. And, and never, never was meant to be that. Maybe initially salvation, but to move from that, let that be a finished work, and now be seated in Him from which all flows. So... Um, well, that's enough on that. But let's look at verse uh, 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace. Okay. All right. So there is, uh, there is this. There is this response. And it's a response on, based on grasp, grasping something. To the praise, so the praise is our response. To the praise of the glory, okay, of his grace. The glory of What has, it been, what has it been talking about up to this point? It has been talking about that you are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, that this is something the Father did, and he put you in Son, and that you've been chosen, but only in him. And I, I'm not, that's another class. I've already taught on that in other classes, so I'm not going to go into that. that. But this was something that was before the foundation of the world, which means it was before sin. Now, I'm saying that in relationship to grace. Hi, Grace. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> in relationship to grace and um, uh, having predestinated us under the adoption of sons, which we will probably get into eventually here because it's a very important part of this transformation from just being um, saved, plan of salvation, to moving into the plan of the Father for sons, <clears throat> um, by Jesus Christ to himself, to the Father, which is all being done according to the good pleasure to please or, to, oh, I hate to turn it like this and say to, <laughs> to pleasure God, but I mean it's to please him beyond pleasing. Because we, you know, because we go around and please God by, you know, it's, there has to be something more substantial, substantive than that. Um, to the praise of, to all of this is, when it's done, according to all this, it is to the praise 
of the glory of his grace. All right. Now, this scripture is going to point out something that we're going to see over and over again, and that we need to wake up to it. Okay? What is that? We need to start reading the Bible and the word grace and read it within the context of the way it's used. Okay, now what we'll see, since we probably will get into Galatians, what we will see is at times it will say stuff just like this and leave it. His, to the praise of his glory, or, you know, glory to his grace, or his grace did so and so. But there are enough places, including right here, that are going to explain that grace. And we need to change our definitions. Because in our minds, grace only is involved in salvation. We're saved by grace. That's it. That's all we see. All right. So let's finish the verse and see how it reads. To the praise of the glory of his grace through which he hath made us accepted in the beloved. It, it didn't say his grace through which saved us. It said, you know, I've drawn this many times before, I'm sure, but here's the beloved and here's the believer. And for the most part, the theology that believers have in their mind is that we are, and it's talk, that verse is talking about acceptance, is that we're accepted by the beloved. And it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. And if that's the concept, then you totally missed it. It does not want to communicate that. Because it misses what? The sun. In sun. It just, it's just between you and you know, Jesus accepting you. Well, I accept you now. And, and here's where we go with that. We say, I'm accepted because uh, the blood of Jesus. Okay. Well, have you ever, it probably says it right here. Oh, yeah. Verse, <laughs> verse 7. In whom we have redemption through the blood the forgiveness of sins. It's in him. We are accepted in the beloved. And in truth, we're not accepted in the beloved as a bee, as a believer. We are accepted in the beloved as one with him. And in truth, I don't know what I do with this stuff. In truth, the better picture is that you don't see you in there. You see, you see the son in whom you are, and you know that he is what? Beloved to the Father. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we go, well, how do I do that? That's invisible. Well, how do I, you know, how do I identify with that? That's invisible. It's not invisible. It's just veiled until... The Spirit of God opens our eyes. It is veiled. And as long as our eyes are on ourselves, <clears throat> as long as we think that what he's working on is you and me to improve us or to make us something apart from decrease, he must increase and we must decrease, then we're, 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 then here's what, then we're wondering why the Holy Spirit doesn't bring living water out of me on a regular basis. We're wondering why um, I don't have that kind of relationship with the Father or with God or with Jesus or, you know, that Sister Susie has. Or, you know, we're going through things that we were not meant to go through. And we're either, what does it say? We're either, uh, in Romans, we're either excusing or accusing. We're excusing ourselves and we're accusing others. Well, the reason why they're that way is because da-da-da-da or this or that, see? 
and we go through this thing. And, but, but it's funny. See, here's the deal. God makes sure that if we're going to be in that spirit, he makes sure that as we're judging, judge not for, you know, you'll be. So he makes sure that you will actually go through a similar thing, but you'll excuse yourself. No, he does. And he says, Don't, it's not a good idea to, to judge. And he'll make sure that you go through that. And then, you know, and of course, you'll feel justified in yourself about you, but you will feel the full wrath of God. That's what we call it. You know, sorry. Righteous indignation against them. When all it is is judgment because we're, we're judging outside of Christ. I no longer know Christ after the flesh. I no longer know myself after the flesh. You know, and there is this place where, but see, the problem with that is we don't want to, we don't want to give up ourselves. You know, the other, the, the old days, it was, uh, the saying was, and it was, you know, to have a good self-image, believe in yourself. Y'all remember that? Well, today it's been changed to believe in your selfie. Put it up on Facebook and look at it and go, that's the best picture I got of me. And I believe in whatever I say on that side. That's who I am. When you know better than that, just try this. Put everything that you really are on there. And you would never do that. You would never do that. Because there's still too much self. You know, you believe too much in your selfie. Yeah, Carolyn? Picture the cross and going to walking to the cross, and on the other side of the cross, it was me, but a better me. You know, going through the cross, that's what it was all about. You know, I'd be a better, better person going through the cross. You can tell us all the picture of going through the cross. But what's coming out on the other side was Christ, and not me, mm. but me in Christ. But like you were saying, not seeing because I was, yeah, you know, and it's totally kind of, mm, oh, okay. <laughs> because that's that's the way a lot of us thought. The mentality that the mentality that, that Christianity it was to become a better me. draw that picture or something. I drew a picture for Deb when we were in Bible school. <clears throat> we weren't even married there, but I, in sharing, and you know, we were both young, but I was beginning to see Jesus, and, and she was a little bit behind me, but she was, she had this mentality, and so I drew a picture to show her, and it was a picture of the cross, and it had a door at the bottom, and there was this ogre-looking person walking to the door, and out the top, that person was coming with a cape, and they were flying, and they had the glasses, and they're going like this. And that, I think that describes the mentality there, is that somehow we're going to be better, we're going to be stronger, we're going to be something more. And here's the, here's the funny thing, is um, while it is, let me see if I can even say this properly, and it may not be so easy. We, um, we think that he's going to make us strong, okay? But he wants to make us weak, okay? Now, this is, that's easy enough. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think y'all got that. But um, uh, we think he's trying to make us weak so he can be strong. But he is trying to make us weak so that his weakness can work in us. And his weakness is that um, I could have called, you know, I could have called 10,000 angels, but I, I won't. I mean, y'all have heard me say this before, but, you know, the thing, Jesus is uh, humbling himself is different than ours. If we are, you know, if we're beat down and nobody respects us and 
nobody loves us and we just, you know, are mistreated and all this kind of stuff. Well, we say, well, I'm just, I'm that, I'm outside the camp, or I'm, I'm sorry, that's, but that, we say stuff like that. I, I'm outside the camp or I'm rejected or whatever uh, because of the Lord when the Lord was different. I mean, we're down there because we can't get up. Nobody will let us up. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's like we have no strength, we have no power, we have no authority, we have no da-da-da-da. So we're there, so we're going to make the best of it by saying, you know, yeah, we're, we're what Jesus is. But here's the deal with the difference, is Jesus was God. He had all power. He had the ability, in the example that I used, to call 10,000 angels, and he went into weakness. Okay. Why? 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 Christianity believes if you, if you have the power, use the power and show people it's God. But God believes if you have the power, go into weakness, and you'll do more. You'll accomplish way more. And, you know, the example of that is, you know, my, the Holy Spirit's endless. He just keeps me running like this. <laughs> anyway, is, is uh, uh, Samson, you know. I mean, he's fighting the Philistines, and he defeats one over here, and then he defeats, you know, a thousand over here, and the jawbone of an ass, and does all this stuff, and it looks great. And, God came on him. And we go, oh, yeah. See, it's that coming out like Superman. Or it's that it's always, it's climbing the height of the mountain. So what happens then? He gets put in a situation where his hair is cut. Don't allow it. No. And he is, he's, he, go, and he goes into weakness. And by his death, and the scriptures say that through his death, he defeated more. He defeated the princes of the Philistines, not just the fingers or cut off a finger, and brought that down. Okay, but you know, there has to be a comprehension of God. There has to be a comprehension of His nature, or we are always going to get it wrong. Okay, so going back to to weakness, we we go. <laughs> We only go into weakness so that we will embrace his weakness. But we, you know, and you say, well, what about 2 Corinthians 12 or whatever? That's fine, but read it all. Because God sent him a, you know, a messenger of Satan and brought him, you know what I mean? You have to see that he didn't get out. God didn't answer his prayer and say, I put you into weakness so that my strength, you know, his strength is his kind of weakness. And I've got something biting my back. Would somebody come up here and scratch it? I'm just kidding. Uh, so, so there's that, you know, weird deal. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. Jim goes, you know, I, sometimes I'm embarrassed to be acquainted with him as a pastor. <laughs> it's just too weird. <laughs> so anyway, um, so true, true victory um, is not being so beat down that we can't get out of it and calling it the lamb. True victory is g going into our weakness, admitting that it's not Christ, and then allowing his weakness to work in us. But it is more powerful and more um, efficacy in that when you actually have the ability to get out of it and you don't, you know. For example, some of you may have experienced something like this. So you got people that are attacking you and saying bad stuff about you and whatever. The normal tendency, this isn't even just a, the world tendency, much less we see it in Christianity, is, okay, let's say that they post a bunch of stuff on Facebook and so, and they say this, this, and that, and so you go, oh, the, the nerve, the, they got a hundred things worse, so you go on your Facebook account and you post their hundred things worse, you know, and, oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, there you go. Well, that's, that's why we say. <clears throat> anyway, I've got chalk all around my feet. Um, uh, 
But what if, what if you said, you know what, I have the power and I have more influence than they do and I can wipe them out. And you say, number one, that's not the spirit of the Lord. Not, not just, it's not the nature of the Lord in attacking, like a lamb attacking something, but it's also not his nature because he believes that life comes out of death. And he's not, he doesn't have to. And that's what you have there is a picture of Jesus before Pilate and before all the accusers and everything else. He said, I could call 10,000 angels. I could, you know, um, I, I have the ability, but I go into the weakness of God because the weakness of God is stronger than men. Kelly? between us and the Lamb, and us as the Lamb delights to do the Father's will. He seeks out that altar. He's up there on the Mount of Transfiguration, but his heart is beating to go down in death for the people. I mean, it's like it's his heart and his way where we have to try to manipulate ourselves to right. do what's not in us, but he delights to find the altar and to give his life for others. It, it is, it's, it's, a, it's a life in us that's not us. Right. And it's, Clear, and, it, and it's real. And it's so real that if we go with that one, the Father's going to be so touched and blessed all these. Yeah, the if we can find Him and release Him instead of our best, mm -hmm. we are going to reach the Father's heart. Hey Amen. Um, Lindsay and I, when we were out looking for a guitar for her, um, of course, we share pretty well, flow back and forth. And, and uh, we were talking about this. and. Uh, I came up with a new phrase, and it says this, what would lambness do? Okay, that's not the answer, folks. That's actually a perversion of the answer. What would lambness do? No, no. First of all, it's not even, you know, what would Jesus do? You know, you can know what Jesus would do and not do it. Did you know that? Yes. That's probably happened. <laughs> <laughs> so let's kick that one out. But but what what would what is this? So what we are uh, what would lambness do isn't really looking to the life of the lamb. It is comprehending that it's sort of sacrificial, self-giving, and so it gets in a situation and it says, well, what would lambness do? And so you go, well, I know that lambness would be like this, and so I'm going to go that way. Still not, you're not giving the father a son. You're not. Yes. Uh, you just oh, that's you know, right. that, and I have, you know, we've had that conversation, but uh, the Lord really corrected me recently on that. And that is, it says, go unto him mm -hmm. who is outside the camp. But right. I went, oh my gosh, epic fail. You know right. what I'm saying? Here I am thinking that maybe outside the camp is something. Right. That is so wrong and so many right. He's the only one. Who can go outside? Right. I go to him. Right. I go to him. Amen. And it just takes me out of it completely. He is the one that gives his life. I am never, ever the one that's offered in that sense. Right. Amen. Well, and I think that, um, and you, you said it, I'm just going to say it a little bit different too. I, I think that, that going outside the camp can really play to our flesh when we feel hurt or wounded or not appreciated or whatever. And, um, and so what Mallory was saying and what I have seen in it too is <clears throat> that there's a difference between going unto him and going outside the camp. Yes. Okay, now let me say it this way. That you can actually go unto him and not even consider that you're outside the camp, you're just with him. That's a, that's a victory. That's a victory when you can do that. But see, when you have to go outside the camp, uh, and that's the mentality, I'm going outside the camp, then it is more about you and what, how people have hurt you or whatever's wrong. And it, you hadn't gone unto him at all. It's, there's nothing of him in that pity party. You know, he, he never attends those kind of parties. <laughs> you know? There's nothing of him in that. So, 
So, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it like this. So it's really a lie. You haven't gone outside of the camp under him. You, have, you haven't fulfilled that scripture. You're just sitting out there using it as an excuse to be spiritual when you're still licking your own wounds, you know? But when you go unto him, you can be with him. Don't you believe that it's possible to be with him in, in horrible circumstances and not be bombarded by the circumstances because you're with him, okay? And I think that would be our goal all the time, you know, is that that's where we abide that's where we rest. Um, but we're still growing, amen? We're all still growing. But in our growth, let us not make excuses for our flesh, you know? What it, how does it say in Galatians, let us not be a, well, in one place it says, make not a cloak of maliciousness. The other one is, uh, what is it? Not be a something for your flesh opportunity one of them says that and but we're using we're, we're using spiritual things but not Christ we're using spiritual scriptures or we're using spiritual concepts you know e even lambness is a spiritual concept that's not the lamb okay and you know why why would we say this we say this because we all genuinely want him in a real way in and out of us and so we can shoot straight we can say these things and we can draw contrast and look at him and go you know that's right i've done that and you know because any just about anything i say along these lines i went through it and i if i don't use if i don't say it out i can remember and go yeah that's where i learned this you know i didn't go up on a high mountain like a monk and hear from god and come down i messed up and I've gone through it now and said, I'm, that's, that's behind, there's too much of the land that I need to take to be fiddling around in one spot and going around, so, you know, you talk about going around in the wilderness for 40 years, we found one little spot in the land and we're going like this, you know, you know we, we, we can't get out of that spot. <laughs> and so uh, it's probably time to quit. Wow, the Lord is so good, though, you know, and the Spirit is good in, in that he is ever uh, trying to draw our hearts to the Father's heart or to the Son's heart and for it to be more than uh, doctrines or teachings or the eternal plan of God instead of the heart of the Father for what he desired before the foundation of the world. Uh, you know, so I just... You know, it's meant to, to, to um, like in the Song of Solomon, draw us and we will run, you know, draw us and we will run. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for um, allowing the Holy Spirit to open our hearts, even if our eyes are not open that you could actually reach our heart. And from our heart, cry out to know your heart. From our heart, want something for you instead of just wanting it, wanting you to be, to serve our ends. And, and so Father, we just ask you to allow the Spirit of God to continue to work deep beyond my foolish words and lack of ability to communicate, but to find you in the word, Father, to find you, to find you in tremendous ways, the way you are there, and to honor you as Father, not on an earthly basis, but on the only true basis of fatherhood that ever existed. And that it be a joy to you that we would reflect back that image which is Christ to you, that Christ the Son, the Lamb of God, the Son of God, that it would that it would cheer your heart 
and satisfy something in you that we have no ability to comprehend, but we can flow with the Spirit and it can be accomplished. So we thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your ever-present movements on us, on us in this place, and keeping us uh, tender and open in new areas, ever wanting more, ever desiring more. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're dismissed.